what's happening y'all welcome back another episode of snaps live youtube.com slash at volume snaps hope you're all having an excellent day give people a couple minutes to get in here it is a mailbag tuesday uh you know your questions into snaps cfp at gmail.com which i imagine it'll probably become our youtube channel name here in a little bit too yeah. snap cfp um if we can get it but uh email your questions there we got some to get to we will also get to some chat questions uh if you put them in the chat i am monitoring said chat and uh, i will put them in the document we got some rumors percolating around the college football world uh a a name that mm. will be very familiar to many of you listening expect to hit the transfer portal uh here in about a week um got some insane numbers as they relate to college football in kind of an ancillary way in terms of the viewership of the Iowa South Carolina women's final for March Madness um and some other little topics that maybe we get to maybe we don't uh Aaron how you doing today? I'm Tim Bayberry he's Aaron Murray this is snaps college yep. podcast what's up Aaron how you doing today I was so hoping to come on the show today and, and see a beautiful mustache from my boy T-Bob, but um, no, unfortunately. You're going to stop this shit right now, it? okay? I'm already depressed enough that I got to cut my hair. You can't tell because I wear headphones here all the time, but God damn it, my hair has never looked this good, and mm. I stare in the mirror every day, and I'm like, I have to get rid of this. You're, I, I'm going to Vegas for what should be the greatest trip of my life to see Grateful Dead in the sphere, and I'm not mm. even having to pay for oh, anything. Dang. I am literally being sugar daddied to Vegas Who's to go to this you? trip. I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey. Mm. You know? Yeah, Look, Sharon did hint to me last night that she, know, she does not like the non-facial hair, though, which made me really sad because I've, <laughs> I've been feeling myself the past couple of days. And she's like, I like a little scruff. I was like, oh. uh, no, I think it looks great, dude. I think you, I need to, you see where it goes. Yeah. Um, but uh yeah, no, I mean, look, in terms of who's bringing me to Vegas, look, you don't jerk off as many times as I have without learning your way around a hand job. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Uh, but thanks to you, I'm going to be there with a fuckboy fade and like <laughs> zeros on the edges and all of my confidence sat right before I'm hitting the wet Republic pool. So mm. I hope you're happy. Really, that you'll be, you will fit you will fit way more into the scene with the fade than than what you have right now way more uh, into the scene yeah i don't want to be doing you a scene. favor i'm getting old the older you get if you maintain good hair it becomes an inherent flex right yeah. like and True. and and what if my hair never grows back mm -hmm. uh jeff solo gotta cut my hair proceeds find a new excuse every couple weeks look we only push you back two more weeks okay everybody relax everybody chill out um, hey, I hope everybody's having a great day today. Shout out to all those Husky fans out there. I don't yeah. want to talk a ton of college basketball here, but it's kind of crazy that at a time when nobody really cares about men's basketball in terms of kind of pop culture or the greater conversation around sports, uh, maybe you just witnessed the greatest men's basketball team ever. Aaron, have you seen any of the numbers on UConn? I only I'm okay. Yeah, I know, I know. You don't give a fuck. So I'll All just right, get into the numbers fucks. real quick. We'll spend like yeah, 30 please. seconds here, and then we'll get to the show. Because um, I talked about it on my morning show this morning. But like, bro, UConn, okay, so they won the Natty last year, right? Mm -hmm. They win every game uh, by an average of 20 points, including the Natty by 15. This year, they win all six games by an average of 23 points, including the Natty by 15 they have now won 12 tournament games in a mm. row by double digits uh they just set a record for large sports training and they did it with two completely different teams it is mm. actually kind of insane how um how dominant this uconn team is so you think they're getting uh, nil funds in in Connecticut? I guess Connecticut has money, bro. Connecticut feels rich as fuck. Yeah, that's all true. those old Northeast states feel yeah. rich as fuck. And then, like, who else are you gonna pay? Right, mm -hmm. all investment is going into a small pool of players, mm -hmm. and so like not yeah, going to the football. That's for damn sure. No, no. Even no. though wasn't Jim Moore Jr. kind of uh, frisky up there? I feel like UConn was an improved football team. No, am I crazy? Yeah. Here? I mean, they were they were pretty damn bad a couple of years ago. I, I covered one of their games, so there was only it it was only up for for UConn. So that's where they were. Uh, let's see where the last uh, few years have been for UConn football. Uh, they made a bowl game in twenty two. 
Ooh. and lost to Marshall. I don't know what they did last year. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. All right. Let's get to the show. You know what that sound means, Aaron, don't you? Uh, or no, going to strip club. <laughs> I don't know. No, you no, because I've never done that sound. So how would you know? Uh, that's the rumor <laughs> mill. Okay, sound the uh, alarms because the rumor <laughs> mill is in full effect. I don't know if this is one hundred percent true, so we are not reporting it. We are just talking about it. rumors. Uh, yes, they're spreading rumors. <laughs> Like, 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 I haven't heard this. Like the junior this high the, bathroom. This is new to me five minutes ago. So, uh, so I found two different USC football Twitter accounts, not the official accounts, like <laughs> rumors concerning USC football. Yes, we gossiping in this bit. And watch this over the next couple of days. There seems to be a lot of momentum saying that Bear Alexander. Going to hit mm -hmm. the transfer portal. Uh, talking about the Trojans here, Nuge Nuge. Uh, former Georgia defensive tackle. Big news when he joined up with the USC Trojans last year. I don't know why he wouldn't be happy. I've seen videos of his apartment. It looks wow. absolutely stunning. But yeah, rumors are Bell Alexander may hit the portal. And um, well, first off, give me your initial reaction when you hear that. A uh, little shocked because, you know, big, big reason. I'm going back into the, back in time here. The big reason why he left Georgia was he wanted more NIL funds, went to USC to get that. So you're getting paid, you're living the life in USC. Um, and now you care about wins. So you didn't care about winning championships at Georgia. You just wanted to get paid. Well, well yeah, you, said are that. you don't know. Paid. We don't know why we don't know why he's leaving. That's you ascribing to him that he's leaving. Cause he's upset that they're not winning. Uh, Why else would he leave? He's getting paid. He went there to get paid. He's getting paid. Yeah. What have you done like the coaches? I don't know. He's going to get paid anywhere he goes. That, see, th yeah. that's, that's the fascinating angle to me here is. Is he going to get a bigger bag somewhere else? As someone who covers this LSU team, yes. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. LSU right now is so fucking desperate. And there are other yeah. teams like this out there, right? It's so fascinating how much leverage these players have nowadays. Because, like, he was okay at USC. One and a half sacks, six and a half TFLs. Those are fine numbers. Yeah, like, the numbers were great, but he was by far the best defensive player in that that team, which doesn't say a lot because they were awful. I mean, you know. <laughs> he flashed. I will say this: like he flashed. Um, me. still, I, I guess what I'm getting at is what he represents to LSU, uh, just in like that single case, is so much more than what he would be paid just objectively on his play. So all I'm mm -hmm. pointing out is that it is wild how much leverage players have in yeah. this spring market because of how desperate some teams are to fill these Achilles heels. I mean, if you get a bear Alexander at LSU, oh, you I mean, I, I, you feel different. Like it's Very crazy. Different. Like, like, and maybe this is exaggerated, but that, but that feels like maybe a win or two uh, different, even almost yeah. that probably is exaggerated, but like that, that will be the feeling. No, I, I and think so a win or two is possible. You, you sure up that with, you know, with what that offense can be like the biggest hole for, for LSU is the defensive line. If you go in there and get, I, 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 I hesitate to use the word premier, but a really, I would say a pretty good guy. You know, like I remember you, know, you and I watched a lot of USC defense last year. Cause we had the debate, like, especially early in the season, are they improved? Are they not improved? So like we really yeah. diagnosed and, and watched. He was truly one of the very few guys that did flash that said, okay, that guy yeah, is legit. That guy mm -hmm. is uh, a future NFL defense attack. Like he has those abilities. And I know a bunch of Georgia fans that were bitching and saying, damn, we wish we still had Bear Alexander this season. So yeah, he would be a massive improvement to LSU. So, and this kind of goes to what we talked about yesterday, T. We, 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 we talk about for coaches always worrying about all this, the, the stresses of being a coach in today's game. But if you are Brian Kelly, why are you not going to your collective or going to your big booster saying, Hey, if Bear Alexander hits the market, I don't give a damn how much you have to pay. If you want us to win shape or win games next year, we need him on the roster. I mean, I did just tweet out attention, all LSU boosters. We you need to overpay this man immediately. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I guess it becomes a question of economics. Do you have the money? And then who yeah. else is in the market? I mean, right here, Go Talk says Texas might court him real good this quick. Yeah, Ohio State's always going to be in the mix. Mm -hmm. Ole Miss ain't afraid to pay. Yeah. Um, so again, but that's Ooh. that's good for Bear. Imagine if Ole Miss gets him, that means he's going to get paid. Uh, it's but just this is still what I have a problem with with this whole thing. This one and done, 
you know, you're hitting, you're getting to do free agency every single year. You don't think that's a little much. I think you're fine with it. I I think it's outrageous that you get to hit the, the, the market every single damn year if you want to. I'm fine with it. I also think I'm in the minority and that yeah. because of it, that'll be one of the driving factors behind the eventual consolidation, yeah. unionization or something there in collective bargaining and rules uh, stopping this. But yeah, me personally, I'm fine with it, but I do think I'm in the, uh, I do think I'm in the minority there. I mean, cause look, Bo Kenny says, team, I know you're all the players have more power, but you say they have too much at the moment. Yeah. I mean, look, I, I, I don't think so, but again, I'm probably not uh representative of how most of y'all feel out there. Um, Scott, Scott, can I get bear some Bitcoin? Yeah. To go to LSU. I mean, if you got Bitcoin to throw around like that, like throw one to T Bob and I, I would love a little Bitcoin. Okay. Hey, uh, no, no, no. You don't yeah. get to do that because you Why only not? care about meme coins. You say no, all no, the no, time. No, no, no. You say all well, the time. I do, you have, some about memes. I do have memes, but and you altcoins. Know, you you're you're a big you're a big believer that the powers that the be portfolio. you're Get big them believer all. that the powers that all. be are going to somehow allow Web three to supplant them. Yeah, like you know what we're just going to demolish. You know what? Yes, because if we look throughout the history, the big banks are buying NT. The big banks are buying. If you look in. throughout I don't know history. What, I don't know why you're not following the news. Come on, <laughs> trying to get you paid. Um, you just tell me when to sell my Bitcoin. Okay, that's all I need from you. Never. Um, and you retire? No, 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 no. Sell before the crash, and then I'm going to rebuy after the oh, crash. Oh, you can't time that shit. Make. Fuck that. Just, just hold it. Uh, just hodl forever. Just hodl forever until <laughs> right, you retire. Right, Maybe one um, Yeah. Right. Sure. <laughs> uh, Gulf South says college football players have more power than any professional athlete currently. I mean, they definitely yeah. have less restrictions. Which, again, I don't yeah. know. I, I don't mind. Maybe it's also because I've spent a lifetime of seeing NFL teams fuck over players contracts like their paper but then hold players to them right like an nfl team will cut you at a a at a drop of a hat and not pay you the money that you once signed for and yet the players don't have that power i don't mind if uh if 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 if, if labor is getting one back at those people even if it's on a different level mm -hmm. um all right so bear alexander let's keep an eye on it if he actually does end up hitting the market how about this from nicole Auerbach? Um, the only college football games, mm. uh, oh, by the way, sorry, the final Nielsen reporting, this is for the Iowa, South Carolina women's final for March madness. The final reporting, uh, the final drew 18.9 million viewers on average. It peaked Damn. at 24 million in the, in the fourth quarter. Um, you, the only, sorry, go ahead. You know, what's also smart. They had the game on Sunday and not on Monday. Why are all men's championship games on Monday night? I think traditionally Monday. Well, I is know Monday primetime not it. a better? No, but is Monday primetime not a better TV slot than Sunday primetime? I'm not I sure. So. I don't know. I would I don't say know. Sunday. And theirs was Sunday afternoon. Like theirs was yeah, like Sunday afternoon. afternoon. Weird. No, no, that is weird that that did I those numbers. I like it though. Actually insane. Um but uh, why this relates to college football is because I think it's a great way to contextualize that number. And the only college football games that drew bigger audiences than that final were the Rose Bowl, the Natty, and Michigan, Ohio State. So you have a women's college basketball game going toe to toe with um, the, the college football national championship game. It is kind of unbelievable to see. And I get it. It's Caitlin Clark. And sure, these numbers probably dip um, as you lose some of the superstars and, mm. and new ones are had to be made next year. But I, I, I am a firm believer in the sociological tale on stuff like this, right? Mm -hmm. um, why are, like, how much talent out of the female basketball talent pool was left unexplored because they grew up say hearing that nobody cared about basketball. Mm -hmm. Like, like you, you don't know the superstars that you missed out on because they went and did something else because society told them this wasn't for them. Um, I watched Rex Chapman with a very interesting take uh, the other day about like, why is the world as a whole producing great white NBA players, but not America. And he was like, well, it's because here we tell them that, you know, this sport's not for you. I, I, I no. like, again, I don't know if that's true. I'm sure we get in like d demography and other stuff that would explain that. But, but it made me start that, yeah, like there's a sociological tale on this where all of a sudden you're going to have little girls out there 
who who do get into basketball and do fully explore their talents and it grows the game over time and it starts to create momentum and it starts to get exponential and then you end up with better sports all around so i, I think yeah. it's pretty fucking cool man and really mind-blowing to see that big of a number what well- the difference, once again, is it's it's the fact, and this is this does go in the football a little bit too, with guys moving around from place to place to place to place to place. Why did we love women's college basketball this year? Why was the numbers through the roof? Because Caitlin Clark is a superstar. Yes, I get that. But she's been there. LSU, these players have been in college basketball. Yeah, uh, you know for, them for more than just one year. You get to know them, you get to know their personalities, you get to you know, get to know them both on and off the court, especially when it comes to, you know, now with NIL. So men's basketball get a lot of one and duds. Men's football. I'm not saying like there isn't transfer portal for women's basketball. Yes, it's there hundred percent. But football is is obviously the big, the big, the big bang when it comes to the transfer portal because of NIL and the ability to get paid everywhere you go. Women's basketball hit gold this year because they had a bunch of superstars that were at their locations and they'd been there for a while. And it was just a perfect mesh of all of that. And and I'm with you. Hopefully it turns out to be like this isn't just a one-time thing. Well, it's already not – I want to be built. clear, though. It's already not a one-time thing. I mean, th- this built off of last year. Last year's numbers. But last year, those were but, but the, it's the same it's players. The same right? cast. It's, it's the, the same, same cast. players. But it I'm was saying- Reese. It was Caitlin. It was Don Staley, head coach of South Carolina, who's obviously still going to be there. But you had the big ones. I think you'll take – those big ones are gone. I think you'll take a step back, but it's like it's like the old uh, one step back, two steps forward, right? Like mm-hmm. you, like the overall gains over time, I think will be borne out, even if you take a step back in the immediate short term uh, next year. But yeah, pretty fascinating stuff there. Uh, pretty cool stuff, if if you yeah. ask me. And here in the chat, Doctor Gonzo is talking about the bikini basketball league. Okay, and you wonder why. Maybe <laughs> you wonder why some of these women were like, you know, I'm not supposed to play basketball. Um, all right, let's uh, get into our mailbag. As always, you can email your questions in to snapcfb at gmail.com. Who, this comes from Nick S. Who is the most overrated coach slash team in college football? I feel like right now it could be Bama because they lost Saban. Only time will tell. I disagree with the Bama answer simply Mm. because right now the roster remains loaded. And if anything, Kalen DeBoer has never been overrated. If anything, uh, he's been underrated. So, no, I'm not going to go Bama. The guy that jumped into my head immediately is Dabo. (laughs) That was uh, my guy, too. (laughs) It's it's just because whenever we do the best coaches conversations – um, he continues to be brought up because he has national championships that nobody else does. And and that's mm. fair to a point, but like it also flies in the face of the evidence that is mm. right in front of us, which is a clear and consistent regression as he stays stagnant in a time of uh, absurd change. So like you still see him at the top of all these lists and Clemson right now is just a solid football program. They are not amongst no. the elite right now. No, and then that's that's I mean that's I think the one that most people would pick just because you said like you 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 rank them and like oh yeah throw Dabo in there because he has championships but it's it this isn't an all time list this is like today where do they belong and he is his resume is far exceeding where he currently is right now uh, a yeah. lot because of his own doing with not kind of you know transitioning as well as most to the the, the new landscape of college football so like yeah. It's Dabo, but I mean, they're also a program that you say they're overrated, but they're in a conference that is pretty weak. They still have more talent than almost everyone in that conference. They have more resources and facilities, maybe better than anyone else in that conference. Yeah. So while they may be down, they are a team that we may consider overrated, but can turn around pretty quick. Well, I have I a very say. good chance of making a 12 team playoff. Very. I just don't think they're going to really threaten once they get no. there. Um, I would say Mario Cristobal is overrated. You know my feelings on that. If you listen to this show, the man's got a 500 career record with like a mm-hmm. decade of head coaching resume to his name. It's a pretty big sample size. Um, you want a little hot one here? You want a little heater? A little fresh Ooh. baked hot take? Ooh. Kirby Smart overrated oh, wow. last year, dude. Remember when David wow. Pollack looked Nick Saban in the eye and said, Kirby Smart is college football? And then what happened? Big Daddy Nick came back and said, "Not so fast," and rode off into the sunset. I'm surprised you didn't bring up Sark after you know, kind of what we hit on yesterday. 
No, of, I think no, no. Did Shark it one year? Potentially one year. We're all. You you wouldn't consider him overrated right now. Your whole oh. big rant. Your whole big rant. He's only done it once. It's been the exception, and now we're saying Texas is a you know top four or five team, and Sark is knocking on the door to be a top five coach in college football. Like you 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 so, saying you wouldn't hit that. That's that's a big one that jumps out to me for you. The reason why I'm not answering Sark is because despite the fact that I'm pointing out those things, um, I actually think he will be able to follow it up. Like, I think they will be able to follow through. I'm just pointing out like what the table setting is. But if you're asking me what I'm predicting, I have been bludgeoned and yep. dragged across the Texas's back finish line. Now I did it kicking and screaming, but I do find myself on uh, the, on the side of the people that think that Texas will continue to be nationally ben, relevant. Ben in the chat says, no, y'all love him, but Dan Lanning feels overrated to me. I feel like that's an interesting one because he's still so early in his career. And I know there's been a lot of excitement. He took over a really good program. Uh, Mario left it in, in, in pretty darn good shape. We know how, you know how well Mario you know, recruits. Uh, he was able to hit gold with Bo Nix, who's a potential first round NFL draft pick this year. Do you think that do you think that there is a possibility of Oregon taking a drop next year? Um, like, do you think they're an eight, nine win team? Like, do you think that there's a chance or do you think they roll in there? Bam. I believe a, in Dan. This is a double digit win team. This is a playoff team. Remember that, uh, thing I sent to the group yesterday from, um, what Twitter account is that it's really good. It's like stat of, uh, stats of war, yep. pretty cool analytical, uh, college football account. This guy, Parker Fleming has created his own system for predicting wins. And, you know, I mean, this is just numbers, but, uh, looking at schedule and I, I don't know exactly how he formulates his numbers, but his, uh, version 0 0.1 of 2024 big 10 win totals actually has Oregon atop the charts yeah. with a 10.3 win prediction, Penn state and Ohio state coming in at 10 one and mm -hmm. then Michigan and Rutgers at eight Oh nine. So, there seems to be some data that would say that maybe Oregon is not. Um, I, I feel why it'd be tempting to fall into that because he's young, it's small sample size, yep. and they're going into a new conference. But like Sark, I find myself betting on Lanning because he's kind of the inverse Dabo. Um, nobody yep. is better suited to dealing with the change of the current college football landscape than is somebody as young and mobile as, uh, as Dan Lanning. Uh, th th there's one more that jumps out to me, and it's Ryan Day. You know, I think he has opportunity to push all that away this year. Mm. If he does get back winning the you know Big Ten championship and you know ends up winning a national championship, like he's he's this is his big year. All chips are in the middle of the table. NIL top players, you went out there and got them. If you can't win this year, then there's a question of can you ever win? So I think that's that's the narrative right now. That that Brian Day was born on third base. He hasn't done a lot with it. He's lost to Michigan three straight times. How could you not be considered overrated if you've lost to your, your biggest competitor, mm. your biggest rival three straight years, and technically on the on the on the paper, you have a more talented roster than them. Yeah, no, that is um that's that's a very fair point on the day front. I just feel like it's so a lot of this, I think, has to do with how we talk about them in public. And I feel like Ryan Day is actually getting a lot of that publicly, right? Yeah. Like, like it, it almost went too far to where all of a sudden everybody's like, Ryan Day sucks. And it's like, I don't quite agree with that. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, this is a pretty good point by Abarge. He says, um, uh, where was it? Uh, Mark Stoops? No, 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 no. Sorry. It was before that. He mentioned Sark. Uh, oh, no. Bo Molinari. Sark is Jimbo 2.0. That's kind of interesting to think about because mm -hmm. when Jimbo went nine and one in 2020, that was kind of the exact same rise that Sark was on. And I don't think any of us would have guessed that Texas A&M was going to fall apart as hard as they did. True. So just something to something to keep an eye on. Yeah, I think uh, different. I think different, though, just based on brands. And I know A&M had a lot of money and then that, that goes a long way in today's world. But. You can't tell me that, like, once Texas does get rolling, that that's a brand that can keep going. And, 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 and there's a little lot more to it. And to be clear, I don't, I don't really think that Kirby's overrated. I was just, yeah. it's just they, they just fell a little short of expectations. We're clipping last that shit. Year. We're clipping that shit. Um, 
And and Nuge Nuge raises a good point talking about late kick Josh Pate, our buddy, talking about how you know this is these are all conversations that have to do with your expectation. Yep. And so if you don't expect James Franklin to win championships, then he's not going to show up in this conversation because we already don't expect him to. Whereas Kirby is rated on a god level tier. So if he doesn't perform like God and he looks mortal, then it's like, oh man, what do we, you know, what well, do we, no, we miss? But I think no, it, it goes to we wouldn't consider, at least last year, you wouldn't consider um Franklin a better coach than Ryan Day or Hardball. So obviously he is going to lose those games. But the problem with George and Kirby is we did start getting to the narrative that's a good of point. Kirby has surpassed Saban. Kirby is better than Saban at this point in his career. So when that didn't happen, then yeah, then Kirby is technically overrated because we all had him higher than Saban. But no one, no one was making the case for Franklin that he was better than those two coaches or that Penn State was more talented than Michigan or Ohio State last year. Um, somebody says, isn't Mark Stoops a top 10 paid coach in the entire country? In 2023, he was. I don't know if it's changed, but he was coming in at nine at nine million dollars a year. Um, you know how I feel about Stoops. I think. It's very overrated, but then all the college football hive mind likes to be like, oh, but look at what he's doing at Kentucky. Kentucky's so hard to win at. Um, I'd put him on this. Is, look, I got to be honest. I got to look in the mirror. I think Brian Kelly is dangerously close to being in this conversation. Um, a lot of it's going to depend on what goes on this year. And the reason being is that at Notre Dame, he had the excuse of a glass ceiling or, or, or just a ceiling, right? Where ah, it's Notre Dame, they have to care about academics, no great recruiting grounds geographically. Like there's <laughs> barriers <laughs> to winning championships there. I mean, let's just call a spade a spade. Okay. Know, it's, just, it's funny I, when it's being said, like, oh, they actually have to care about, you know, school. <laughs> bro, I mean, look, uh, Cardell Jones <laughs> said it best. I didn't come here to play school. Know, Bear funny. Alexander didn't come to USC to play fucking school. Okay. No. Um, and so you look at Brian Kelly now at LSU, Nick Saban, Les Miles, Ed Ogeron, all won national championships within their first four years. Yeah. Do we think that Brian Kelly is going to be able to do the same? And if he doesn't, uh, then how should he be judged, uh, against that? And well, I also think he's going to be judged because at least for my standards, I've, I've, I've kind of stood on this and said that Brian Kelly is a top five coach. Yeah, you we know, all have. We all. Well, I think have. we all have. He's, so, like, if he if, if if he is not getting to that double digit win in year three, how can we consider him a top five coach in America? Yeah, no, I agree. And 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 granted, he did do great things in terms of where that roster was at yep. to the immediate results, but national championship is the the barrier with him, and that's what he's going to be judged against. Which brings us to mailbag question number two from Ken G. Uh, a lot of people at Baton Rouge are excited about the 2025 recruiting class for LSU. They got Bryce Underwood, who's the number one quarterback, Harla Berry, the number one running back, and maybe Decorium Moore. He's the number one wide receiver. However, on three did just flip uh, on Decorian Moore to saying that now they believe that he's a Texas lean, even though he's committed to LSU. So we'll keep an eye on that. Um, and he goes on to say, will Brian Kelly win a natty at LSU? And if so, when? I still think Brian Kelly will break through at some point and win a national championship at LSU because, again, the last three coaches have, right? And mm -hmm. I think that he's uh, – I, I, I think that he's at his height probably a better coach than Les Miles was, and I think that yes. he's probably a better yes. coach than Ed Ogeron was. Yes. And so that would think that, yes, he will win becomes much more interesting because I don't see it this year. Maybe next season. With 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 a more experienced Garrett Nussmeyer, one more year in the hopper, mm -hmm. a year to build up and shore up some of the weaknesses, another year with this new defensive staff that you just paid ten million dollars for essentially to bring in there. So I'm thinking maybe year four would be a year to circle in which LSU needs to take a significant step forward, and that also be another year of not having Nick Saban. So yep. like, there's a lot of trends that would point to maybe not this year, but the year after for LSU. Yeah, I don't think it's this year. Um, I think I think if LSU can get to that double digit win, I think that's a huge that that to me that would be like okay, I still consider him a top five coach. Still consider him, you know, one of the best in the game. If you can get a couple pieces, you mentioned Garrett Nussmeyer coming back for another season, year four possibly. I don't know. Like I don't know what the I don't know what teams are going to look like next. You know, in two seasons, I don't know what, yeah. who's going to say who's like they, they move. They may lose both their tackles. Both those tackles, you know, it's going to be maybe the best offensive line in America at LSU. 
both those tackles may go in the NFL. So then you're having yeah. to replace guys on the offense. So like you just don't know what these rosters are going to look like in two years. But I can firmly say that I truly believe like this year ain't going to be the year. So, you know, what's next year for? Um, we'll see. But I think you brought up a great point. Let's not forget when he took over this roster, what, three years ago, two and a half years ago, whatever it was, they had 30 something scholarship players on that roster. They could barely put together a team to play in a bowl game. It was embarrassing. So, yes, to take that, turn it into an SEC West winner in year yeah. one. Yeah. And then a double digit winner in year two, it's pretty damn impressive. Uh, so it's, I, yeah. it's, a, it's a lot more to build for that roster. So yeah. not this year, but possibly year four. Yeah. I mean, uh, 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 Gulf South says BK took over a worse situation than saving miles or coach. That's objectively true. Yeah. yeah. Um, and yes, uh, Nussmeyer does have two years left. So you kind of figure he'll probably be your starter for the next two years, unless he has like an astronomical year and decides that, um, he wants to go ahead and, make his way uh to the nfl do you think did you answer do you think brian kelly will win a natty at lsu in this 10-year contract yes okay yeah i think yeah, there's just there's too much hidden talent in louisiana i mean they're, they're they're the team that has put to put what more nfl guy guys in the nfl draft that have been drafted that weren't four and five star guys than anyone else in the country it's incredible like the two and three star guys are in the middle of nowhere louisiana yeah. they are more, LSU is wow. terrible with five stars and they're basically like the Iowa of the sec when it comes to developing the underrated guys and getting them into the, um, into the NFL, yeah. um, mailbag question. Number three, this comes from T Bob H, uh, can Michigan, that's me, uh, can Michigan set an NFL draft record this year. Remember back in the day, Harbaugh before the season said he thinks Michigan could have 20 draft picks uh, set the record. Now, a couple of guys chose to return, which maybe affects that number, but the record was set by UGA uh, in 2022 is that 21 UGA team. They had 15 draft picks, five first rounders. Um, 2019 LSU had 14 draft picks. Oh, four Ohio state had 14, um, this is very rare. However, mm -hmm. when you look at this Michigan team, they had 18 players invited to the combine. UGA had 14 in that year, which had all those players drafted. There is a chance. They're not going to touch the five first round picks, but no. there is a good chance, uh, not good chance, but there is a shot that Michigan could indeed end up setting the record and having 16 players drafted. Ooh. And probably the biggest uh, surprise there would be the fact that 12 of the 14 for UGA were four or five stars. Whereas this, the, the, all these picks from Michigan, a bit more development, a yeah. bit less frontline superstars coming out of high school. And yet guys who went and joined the program and were made into NFL guys, which I think is a big credit to Michigan scouting and, uh, their development and their process overall. Yeah. Um, and and I think the, the not only the, the scouting and development, which is apparently one, you know, one A, one B when it comes to like the importance, but also like just buying it. I mean, they truly bought into their identity. You know, they bought yeah. into the identity that we're gonna be more physical, we're gonna be stronger, we're gonna, you know, just beat you to death at the line of scrimmage. And that's that's that was their identity. And that's what the that's what the nation viewed them as. That's what Ohio State and the Ohio State fans viewed them as. That's how they viewed themselves. We're gonna be bigger, tougher, stronger. Maybe not as athletic as Ohio State, maybe not as flashy, but this is who we are. And it was three years of building to that championship, and um, now it culminates with with the possibility to to put more guys in the NFL than anyone else to the draft. So um, I love it. It, it. Hardball brainwashed the shit out of them, and it worked out beautifully. Yeah, they're like the uh, Northern A and M in uh, in many ways. Uh, our resident Beaver fan, Clint Moses saying Jonathan Smith is overrated. Um, where's he coaching now? Where, where did he leave? where did he leave? Uh, where would he end up? where did he end up? That feels a bit like big 10, big sour, the big 10, sour grapes. Um, because I thought he did a really great job at Oregon state. So I don't think I would, I would answer that. Uh, where did he end up going though? Somewhere in the big 10, I believe. Um, oh, Michigan state. Yep. You're calm. Yeah, Michigan State. Uh, we'll see. Uh, Surfer Boy says bigger, tougher, and stronger. And Michigan cheated like no other team in college football. Not really, dude. Come on, dude. We're, we're I mean, no, they didn't. It's kind of like Deflate Gate, whatever, dude. Who, you know, I don't Who think it's doesn't deflate deal. footballs. I mean, come on, really? Yeah, hey, remember Chase Daniels sitting here talking about all the football prep that Alex Smith used to do? 
I love um I love what you see my you should see my pregame rituals. Where you, well, I mean, we know about you. You wouldn't even dap anybody up. You can't oh, have that golden arm touched. Mm -hmm. I'm still thinking about you saying that all of these women's fathers would be happy that you slept with their daughters. <laughs> They're like, yeah, I mean, you did fuck my daughter, but then again, it's Aaron Murray. Like, that's pretty cool. That's, that's not a bad thing to have inside of my beautiful daughter that I used to play with. She's going to take any ones. Why not? Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, mailbag question number four. Comes from Lori H., uh, who, again, created the Snaps Bingo card, probably my favorite thing ever. Mm -hmm. um, what's your last meal? <clears throat> like, death row last mm -hmm. meal. Mom's, my mom's pot roast. It's gone so good. Really? So good, yeah. Just melt it's in your mouth? It does. It does. It is. Uh, that um, nice assortment of crumble cookie. You know, like my favorite crumble cookies. Really nice. A crumble yeah. cookie for the final. Zuc meal. A nice oh, loaf of zucchini bread as well. Love um, zucchini bread. Yeah, th that is uh, zucchini bread for the love last zucchini meal. bread. I mean, love zucchini bread's zucchini good. Bread. Don't get me wrong. I ate a lot at the love local coffee zucchini. shop, Sacred Grinds, back in New Orleans. Favorite coffee shop of all time. Cool ass place. It was part smoke shop, part herbal supplement shop. It's built into a graveyard, has like zombie Jesus all over the place, has cold brew that'll just fucking ignite your soul with the amount of mm. caffeine in it. Oh, but yeah, they, they sold a fire uh, a zucchini bread, but I do not think I would be putting it in my last meal. Mm. Um, though, again, I shouldn't be talking shit because my last meal, as sad as this is, would be like sesame gumbo. chicken, shrimp fried rice, a bowl <laughs> full of gumbo. And maybe some fried chicken on the side. Some mall Chinese food. Yeah. Yeah. Like exactly. Mm, yeah. It oh, would, it would, it would be mall Chinese. Just a styrofoam packed to the gills with mm. mall Chinese food. So that when and they just get, the, get the, the big scoop of extra sauce that just they would yeah. pour it all over afterwards. Yeah. I mean, holy, how many fucking calories was that? Well, and, 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 and the best part is like when they kill me then you have to deal with whatever comes out of my asshole. You know, <laughs> you want to kill me. Okay. Now clean up this shit. Cause that oh. shit stinks mm. and it's everywhere. Mm. Um, I, uh, but, but yeah, yeah there's, there's, there was, there, someone brought up, uh, Scott, the buffet style. There was a buffet that it was in Athens, this Chinese buffet. And we're like, let's go there. You know, it was a Sunday after a game. My family was down. Like, let's go get some food. So we're like, oh, let's go try it out. Everyone walking out of there looks so miserable. We're like, why is everyone like, so we go in there and obviously you eat so much, you eat yeah. so much sodium, you're just fucking buffed yeah. up. Yeah. You walk out of there and you feel awful. It was so good. But as soon as you hit the doors and see sunlight, you're just like, uh well, that's the uh, that's the the I I've I've thought about this a lot. The psychological dynamics of a buffet are mm -hmm. fascinating because you feel a real drive to get one over <laughs> on the restaurant, right? Like you're like, okay, whatever the price is, like if it's like a Fogo de Chao, like a nice yep. Brazilian steak, you're mm -hmm. like, okay, I'm paying like 40 bucks. I'm going to eat $80 worth mm -hmm. of fucking meat, okay? <laughs> I'm paying 50 but I'm going to eat $30 worth of this Chinese uh, food. And you feel like you won, but you've actually oh, lost because, yeah, you feel horrible. Your arteries are clogging. I mean, I remember... Um, <laughs> After a practice one time in college, we went to our favorite local Chinese buffet, Great Wall, and I ate so much that I couldn't drive afterwards. <laughs> I went in the parking lot and, and I took a like just bursting at the seams to go box. Uh, but I went in the parking lot and I laid the seat back and had to sleep for an hour before I could uh, <laughs> before I could operate a, a motor vehicle once again. Uh, um, all right. P P PG, our producer, who's only going to be with us for a couple more shows giving me craps and you can pick like a hundred items and this is what you're doing. PG, <laughs> come onto the screen. Come say hello yeah. to that beautiful mustache Yeah, you ears. never said hi. You, Rumbly used to pop in. Yeah, yeah there he is. There, there he is. You give better. us your meal. If you're, hey, you're chat, where do you think us. this guy, chat, where do you think this guy <laughs> lives? Where do you think this guy lives? Tell me, tell me where you think this guy and is. Is that an AC Milan jersey? Indeed Milan it is, T-Bob. Great uh, eyes. Nice. Uh, where, 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 where do you think he lives? Uh, the answer is Brooklyn. Uh, by the way, so <laughs> who would have guessed, right? Okay, death row meal. So, Aaron, my issue lied within you just answering pot roast 
and then kind starts. of stopping there. <laughs> you need, like T Bob says, a buffet style array of items. Yeah. Okay. So I think I'm doing, and I, I can't eat this much food. So a lot of it would go to waste, but I'm going to do like a whole cheese pizza, like Kevin McAllister and yep. Home Alone. Hell yeah. I think I would do like chicken tenders, like fried chicken tenders. Ooh, so good. I would probably do some raw oysters. Like, oh, like a wow. dozen raw oysters. So what a very curl. interesting combination what a of food. Really wow. getting, really, I mean, talk about shitting yourself after you're killed. Hell yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you're telling You're me. building something dangerous there. Yeah, I would do some, maybe some crawfish pie. Uh, and then just ice cream. <laughs> Vanilla ice cream, I think. Um, the comments in the chat are phenomenal. Yeah, Emil, this man definitely wrote about microdosing at Vice before they closed the door. <laughs> I wish. A dream job of mine. That or BuzzFeed listicle writer. Bro, who didn't oh. love Vice back in the day? Vice came on so strong. That mm. HBO show they used to had was actually fire. Um, I don't know exactly what went so wrong with Vice. That's a story that I'm not too familiar with, but it had its moment. It definitely had its moment um, in the sun. No, this is not my father. Orange stash snaps. And T, come on. Come Bro, on. I, can't, I cannot do it. One last time for Thursday. For Thursday. I'm still for trying boys. to like figure out if maybe I get these to connect, but come there's on. like just enough wispiness where I can't. And it's like, uh, it's kind of frustrating me. Bo with a great point here. No Mexican. Yeah. I mean, here. that's so true. I, a sizzling fajita plate is one of life's greatest pleasures. Uh, I chat, lay down. How chat. do you make your perfect fajita? First off, chat. It's would chicken. The new ice. snaps. Would the new snaps not be a great show if we branded as just two guys with beautiful stashes? Just say no. Just say no. It's an awful idea. Just if say. you if you ever tie in your entire identity to your physical appearance, and we're always going to have to do that, mm -hmm. right? That's that's that's, yeah. that's, that's, that's yeah. a step too far. No. Um, one ninety nine super chat from Nick. There we go. How, How often, often were you asked? Yeah, for a mustache ride. T Bob, I'm running. This <laughs> um, I was not. Unfortunately, I was not asked for a mustache ride too often. Uh, I'm guessing PG and Aaron both have uh, been asked many times more than I have for that. Zoom, but, zoom. Um, Trent yeah. goatee with the stash. Uh, T Bob would look like Robert De Niro in Heat, which I think would be really cool. Okay, you know I'm not a. Hey. You know, now you're kind of talking my language. Um, it's a bad verbal impression there. But if you're watching the show, I mean, the face isn't awful. Um, well, fellas, thanks so much. Ben McDonald has made his look a thing. Uh, yeah, thank you, PG. There we go. Yes. Shout out, PG. Been producer from behind the scenes forever. Now we're really going to miss him uh, on the other side of all this. Um, mm. Oh, okay. Real quick. Build me your perfect fajita, Aaron Murray. Build you the perfect fajita. So like. The plate comes uh, out. What's your pass? Like, what's your? Well, uh, I'm going the fajita trio. Like, we're at Chili's over here, so we're getting the fajitas. We're going with shrimp, chicken, and steak. Oh, uh, yeah, we're going the whole thing. Onions, peppers, sautéed onions, peppers, yep. pico, yep. Yep. cheese, guac. Mm -hmm. That's it. No sour cream, no beans, no rice. Um, wait, wait, no, no, no sour cream, no sour cream, no beans. No sour cream. Maybe a little, I, little beans. I'm not like huge. I just, it, I like beans, but you know, it's it's hit or miss for me if I really wanted my fajitas. But no rice, got enough carbs already. No sour. Um, cream. and yeah, no sour cream is yeah. I agree. Straight to jail. Straight to jail. Mm -hmm. I agree. Uh, I would say this. Hit the like button if you're watching. But for me, um, I go surf and turf, a little shrimp and steak, and I like to lay down a uh, a line of beans. At the center tortilla, like a uh, like a bonding agent. I'm then going to sprinkle rice on top of that. Next, I'm going to build my proteins. One strip of steak, one big shrimp. On mm. top of that, uh, we're going to put the onions and peppers, as you said. Then we're going to throw a little pico. Mm. No, no. Then we're going to go sour cream and guac. Then we're going to throw pico on there. Uh, pico, pico, pico de gallo. Thank you. Sorry. Pico. I'm an idiot. Yep. And then I'm going to pour some of that delicious butter sauce over the mm. top. I'm going to fold that thing up and eat it. And that is one of the best singular mm. bites of food that mm. you can possibly have. Uh, in all right now. I'm going to Chewy's. Let's go. Come back here. Let's go to Superior again and go drink margaritas. Let's go. Aaron oh. only drinks one margarita because he's a pussy, though. Why? Well, because I have to drive responsibly through Louisiana. <laughs> you can get two. I've realized you get two, and then you're, if you go over two, you should not drive. First you get off, two, you can drive. Did me not chugging the beer in four seconds kind of 
get you off my ass about drinking Fair. a little bit. I apologize. I apologize. I was actually Thank impressed. You. I Thank thought you. it was going to be like Aaron Rodgers where he took like coming out my nose. Gagging. To, uh, well, he just like, he was in a, he was in an NBA stadium on the Titan Tron. And I think he took two breaks to drink one beer, which is mm. inexcusable. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, okay. Any chat, if you want to get any chat questions in, uh, I have a take to fill a, a minute or two with, but, um, true or false in the sec, you only become a basketball school if you are forced to. And the reason why I say this is because mm. I've been watching a lot of online sniping between like Arkansas, Auburn fans, Kentucky fans. And it got me thinking like, like Auburn. Yeah. Like, cause we were, okay. We were saying, okay, which sec school do you think cares about basketball second to Kentucky? Let me pull up the sec real quick. I would say like right now today or like overall, uh, maybe a mixture of both. I think Florida's up there. Florida's had a pretty good past couple of decades of basketball. I think they give a damn about it. Do they? I feel like Florida doesn't give a damn about any sports almost sometimes. Mm -hmm. I mean, they have a baseball team that boggles the mind and is maybe the most. I think Auburn, the Auburn. I mean, it's like today, oh, really? Auburn's sipping the Kool Aid maybe more than anyone at the moment when it comes to basketball. Exactly right, but yeah. that was my point because they've been forced to. Yeah, like it's all they can hang their hat on. Arkansas has been forced to. It's not by mm -hmm. choice. Uh, Kentucky definitely chooses because of their history. Uh, Tennessee, like basketball, was the hot thing, but all of a sudden football's hot again now. And what is Tennessee like more? football right they they they, they, they had a top four basketball team this year i know i know but no, but no. you don't think that people care more about football no shit everyone cares more teams? about football but it doesn't mean that like tennessee basketball is a big i would say tennessee basketball is a pretty big brand i agree but because they were forced to no. so the point is if you're sitting here arguing about sec basketball on twitter um mm. just miss me with that bullshit. i think, ten I think tennessee is the exception of all of them I, I would say this tennessee is the exception of all of them I think that there is a true, genuine love for Tennessee basketball. Okay, maybe not to the um, same extent as football, obviously, but I, I would like it's not all. This isn't an Auburn situation. I mean, it took Alabama far making a from Auburn. Four. It took Alabama. I used it my Alabama group chat football. as a uh, barometer for how much they care, and it took them making a Final Four. Like they didn't. Nobody in the group chat started mentioning Alabama basketball until they made the Sweet Sixteen. No, they like basketball because they so. Going the conversation, Auburn was buying in the basketball because they were struggling with football. Yeah, they now they were being the big brother, just said, "Oh, yeah. you think you're good at basketball? Watch what we can fucking do!" And then now they're better at basketball. I think it was more of a "you will never be better than big brother" kind of moment. Um, Brandon says, "Would the average SEC fan trade an SEC title in football for a national basketball title?" Yeah, exactly. Kentucky would be the only school that would choose basketball title over football, um, and they may even choose football. Just that? it would never happen. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, would think, I would think football. Um, we're okay. We had a chat question. I was going to get to, uh, George says, what movie or TV show was ruined because of the ending? Um, I'm a big believer that, well, uh, I would say the sixth Harry Potter movie. I was so on board with the entire time. And then when they didn't actually do the battle of Hogwarts at the end, um, not the seventh. And the yeah. sixth, the raid on Hogwarts, in which, you know, Dumbledore, Snape, all that stuff. Um, in the books, that is like a crazy fight scene where there's it's the first time where you have real violence going down at the school and Finry or the 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 werewolves, the guy they're murdering people and whatnot. Like that should have all been in the movie, and then they just took it all out for some reason. That kind of soured me. And then I think the end of Rise of Skywalker uh is and really the whole Rise of Skywalker movie is the most absurdly bad ending to the Skywalker saga mm -hmm. that you could possibly fathom. And that's from someone who actually really likes the first yeah. uh, new, the first two sequels, uh, which I know uh, does either. If I had to pick one, it would be The Breakup. Did you ever watch The Breakup? Um, Jennifer Lawrence, no. it's Vaughn. No, I never did. Jennifer Anderson. Okay. Yes, no, I never did. Or what did I say? Anderson. Yeah, yeah Anderson. Because it was it was real. They actually didn't get back together at the end of the movie. So it was like oh. a little depressing because you're used to like walking away feeling really good. Like, oh, they got I back together. I kind of respect that though. I kind of respect that from I like- I know, you think standpoint. you do. No, you think you do. But then you walk out of the theater and you're like, that fucking sucks. Like they didn't get back together. Like that's kind of bullshit. I'm kind of pissed uh, off. 
And, so. and look, I think I think Nuge Nuge nails it here. Game of Thrones is like the undefeated Patriots oh, losing to the Giants. Oh, no, bro, Game of Thrones crumbled oh, in the end. And no. and and again, I stayed with them for mm -mm. so much of the run. Like I was literally with Game of Thrones until the last episode, mm -mm. and the last episode is an exercise in madness. Mm -mm. After they just spend years fighting over the throne, suddenly everybody's convinced to play nice because Tyrion's like, who has a better story than Bran? Like, get the fuck out of here, dude. That doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. And then and then, and then Sansa's like, well, we in the North want to remain independent. And they're like, all right, cool, bet. But then none of the other houses want to remain. Like, it's, it's, it's just so crazy on so many different levels. And again, look at the amount of... Mm -hmm. of cachet that game of thrones burned they were the biggest thing in the world and now everybody hates them still to this day you get on free people the the giant subreddit that was massive for years and it's just people bitching about the ending <laughs> it is it is wild in the tale on that thing and how and how it had uh, that, that it had um when's the next season of of dragons coming out soon right? this summer i saw no i saw a uh, i saw an ad for it last night a couple ads nice. Ooh. Also, uh, Rings of Power season two coming out this fall. Very excited for both those. Penguin mm -hmm. coming out this fall. The the spinoff from the Matt Reeves Batman movie could be pretty good. I think yeah. if they play it like a straight gangster drama. Have you watched the new Netflix series called Three Bodies? Something Three Bodies. No, it's interesting. I feel like you may like it a little bit more because you probably get it better than I would. But um, yeah, CJ Brand is king because he's a story that nobody understands. <laughs> like, yeah, absurd. What the fuck, dude? Mm -hmm. I agree. Um, somebody asks, are you a fan of the invincible television show or just a comic book? Uh, I loved the comic book for years. I never finished it. It's one of the best I've ever read. The first season of the show was awesome. I have not watched season two yet. I will eventually, but I like both. I think they're both fantastic. If you like superhero stuff, Aaron, um, I, I would really recommend checking out invincible on prime. It's a cartoon. Nice. And it's very well done. Um, let's see. Uh, do you have any other good answers here? Full Metal Jacket mm -hmm. thought the USA was going to win this time. That's pretty funny. Um, Boy in the Striped Pajamas says Bo Kennedy. That's fucked up. Pretty sure that's about the Holocaust. We've never actually seen it though. Uh, CJ, what former teammate do you think could have been a star in the pros, but life got in the way? Um, one guy that jumps to my head, and he was very good early on in the NFL, and then I think it was like maybe like weed tests or something that got him. Um, Jalen Collins was mm -hmm. awesome uh, with the Falcons cornerback. And I still, and, and granted, he's really making it. He's on raw room now, which is a huge, um, which is a huge, uh, what you call it? Uh, YouTube show that they do him and Darren Bates, I believe. And Dunlap, I can't remember exactly who's on it, but it's a really big show. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. He 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 was really good coming out of LSU. Really solid start to the NFL career, and then just out of nowhere, just kind of fizzled out for for some reason. Yeah. Uh, I, I want to say Gurley, but Gurley was a damn MVP of the league. But then just like yeah. it, it's crazy thing, like Gurley retired and he was 27, 28. Yeah, yeah. There's all kinds of weird. It's crazy. Like he had this incredible like six, five or six years. But then was out of the league and he was, you know, not even 29 years old. Um, wild, wild. Very famous one in LSU, Lord, not a teammate, but Cecil Collins. He's an incredible running back, Cecil the Diesel. And he ended up going to jail because he was like breaking into women's room and watching them sleep and shit, which uh, you guess. can't do, you know? Mm -mm. Who would have guessed? No. Yeah. Um, T Bob, do you like the boys on Prime? Yeah, I love the boys. The boys is fucking awesome. You watch the boys, Aaron? No. Another great superhero parody. Um, Homelander is one of the best villains made in uh recent memory. Uh Aaron, how much masters coverage you catch it over the next five days? I appreciate that being put up so I can uh when does coverage start? Do we get to see a little of the practice rounds? I'm guessing Thursday. They don't do like the part three contest or anything tomorrow? I think the part three tomorrow will probably start broadcasting. God, I wish I was there. Oh. Yeah. But no, what are you talking about? You get to call the Georgia spring game. Oh, my God. That sucks so bad. 
so so bad. Um, would our boy Caleb King fall into this answer? No, 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 no. no. I mean, like no. to get in the way, he got in that fight and it kind of upended everything for him. Mm -mm. Um, Isaiah Crowell, so crow. Oh, I forgot about Crow Daddy. Wow. Mm -hmm. Uh, Ben Collinsworth, if you and Aaron had to form a D&D &D party, what's your roles and other party members? Um, I have really enjoyed my time as a halfling bard. I love the bard class as a whole. Uh, the only other class that I would want to play would be a wizard uh, because I just love magic users in D&D &D because really you can do anything. Like yeah. I have no real appeal to want to be like a warrior or a barbarian or, or a, uh, excuse me, a fighter. Or a barbarian or anything like that. What would Aaron be? I have no idea what that even means. Maybe like a paladin of sorts. Um, Kyle Goodry, Tom Bombo was the MVP of the night shift. Bro, I know, dude. Just just wait until we get that final episode put up. It's gonna be great. It's a really good episode. I don't know why we haven't had it yet. Uh Bo Kenny Murray, do a drinking stream watching the masters like T Bob does whiskey and wine. Oh, that'd be a lot of fun. See, if me and Aaron lived close to each other, we could do this stuff. Mm. it'd be so good just i'm not moving to baton rouge but you have ties in atlanta so it's on you big guy yeah you're right all i gotta do is like quit the main job that actually pays yeah. me and financially yeah. imperil my three kids and wife and then sure it's like not that big of a barrier of entry sure. it's not big exactly deal. no no big deal at yeah, all it's fine take it take a bet on yourself p take a bet uh i have never played gemstone three cj all right uh oh new jews by the way aaron saying driving range coverage started yesterday nice all right. Yeah. Let's go. Uh, go Tiger. Hey. Earth. Is that what you meant? Go Tigers? Yeah, we'll go Tiger. Uh, uh, last show with the volume Thursday. Come hang out with us one last time oh, before right. T-Bob and I are solo polo. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, we got to go because we got to figure out how to make this show on our own. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's funny. In this business, I prefer the term... Um, on-air personality but the traditional term for what me and aaron do is called talent mm -hmm. uh but what talent really means are lazy fucks who just want to show up and turn and the talk. mic off and yes. then have to do nothing else don't mm -hmm. want to edit anything don't want to upload mm -hmm. anything don't want to do any of that so the talent is out here about to have to be fending for themselves mm -hmm. and uh so if you want to help out these talentless hacks uh, you can very free, easy ways to do so is to like the show, um, share it. And if you're listening on pod, uh, rate and review it. So mm. massive, massive. Thank you. Love you all so much. Y'all are the best. Um, and we will see you on Thursday for the final, not the final snaps, but the final snaps here in the volume family. Love y'all. We'll see you on Thursday.